Here we go. Can everyone hear me? All right, I'm going to move this down. Can everyone still hear me? And I can see you guys. I can see you. I can see you. Hi. I'm going to talk to you today about how to find remote roles. And if you bear with me just a second. Ah, there's my presenter notes. How to find remote roles. And the part that I didn't specify in the uh, title was especially if you're not a developer. So just a quick show of hands. How many people here today are actually in a remote role right now? How many people are looking? A few. Okay. So I actually got interested in looking for a remote role about 15 years ago. I live in Houston. If you've ever been to Houston or if you live there now, you know that traffic is atrocious and just getting worse. And I had a series of car accidents which made me realize that I didn't want to be on the road to get to and from my job every day anymore. I didn't even work in tech at the time. And I think remote roles in tech have just become a thing recently. But that idea in the back of my mind that I just don't want to commute anymore was there. So I'm curious to know, for those of you who are in a remote role right now, if what you have done to find such a role or land such a role is different from what you see here today, go ahead and tweet it out or post in the Slack because I think that would be useful for the rest of the audience. And if you're looking and you've also had a different experience, do, do the same. Tweet it out or post in the Slack and let's all compare notes. So my path was an interesting one. I went from wearing an actual hard hat and working in manufacturing. Um, I started off with a chemical engineering degree. And from there, I took a series of different assignments, going from technical to business, working in procurement and business analysis. I ended up as a project manager and then a project manager for a media company. And that's kind of how I sideways landed into tech. Let's go the other way. So this is who I am today. I'm Lynn Gosh Cabrera. And I'm the COO of an athleisure company, or more to the point, a multitasking, um, tech-enabled apparel company. I'm based in Houston, Texas, and that's uh, where you can find me on Twitter. The first thing that I would urge everyone to consider when you're looking for a remote role is context. What are you trying to optimize for? Like for me, it was all about stopping commuting, and you know, in this day and age, I also want to leave a little bit less of a carbon footprint. When you're looking at remote roles, is it the only remote role a company is offering? Or are they offering multiple remote roles? And the reason I put that out there is, is that role that they posted something that they're just going through the motions for? Or do they really want to start growing a remote team? Or do they already prioritize remote culture? What are the company's values? And what's the company's culture? Are they already at a point where they value a remote culture, they're trying to grow a remote culture from the ground up, are they transitioning to that? Or are they saying that that's what they want to do, but they're not quite there yet? That's something to look at. And then finally, what are the trade-offs? If you don't take a remote role and, and, and state in what you're doing now, or if you've got several different remote roles to choose between, what are the pros and cons of each? I think it's important to put the context out there before you look at the resources of and start evaluating and applying to actual roles. I'm now going to shortcut something for you. If you're starting to look for remote roles, I highly recommend starting with the very first link up there. And I'll send this out to everybody. I think the conference will, too. That first link is a list of almost 400 companies that are either fully distributed or they're partially distributed. They might hire in certain teams only, or in certain roles only, remote employees. And for most of these companies, they're looking for developers. And the bias that I bring, as well as the perspective that I bring to my search, is that I'm looking for engineering management or PM roles. So this will be skewed a little bit that way. I mentioned Indeed out there, just because it is good for finding remote roles in non-tech companies but if you're looking for a technology role. So for example, the media company that I used to work for had a tech team. If you're looking for startup roles, angel.co is of course better. And I maintain a list, which I'll make public, I think it might be locked right now, um, that lists a whole bunch of 
resources, different companies, different groups and individuals who just curate remote, remote roles. The one thing that I would suggest that you do if you're looking for remote roles and you don't really know where to start, like I didn't, pivoting from a completely different industry and having just fallen sideways into it, is start attending conference. Attend a conference like this one and start to get an idea of what companies do hire, what they look for, and you know where you might start looking for remote roles beyond your own geography. Your mileage will definitely vary. I've been to a couple of huge conferences with thousands of people attending. They're not really great for having individual con uh, conversations and really understanding much of anything. Conferences of this size are great because you can have that networking experience. So do your homework before you go. So I put this slide in here because this is a lightning talk. And the process that I just described of honing in my own remote role search was over a course of, you know, in one sense, more than a decade, and in another sense, over a couple of years, but really over the last few months. I'm showing you the top of that iceberg, and I hate just giving out tips. I don't like giving out tips. I like for you to see the entire iceberg. So when we're networking this evening, please come find me. Let's trade stories. And if you have specific questions about how I'm going about my search, I'll let you know. And why do I share this? I came to Teklahoma and I applied because I'm from here. I went to Union High School in South Tulsa. I participated in a lot of STEM activities, including the science fair when I was a kid. I graduated with my engineering degree from the University of Oklahoma. And I established a STEM-focused sorority, one chapter of it, the second chapter of it, actually, at OU. I think there's a lot of talent, a lot of skills, skilled people, and a lot of ca human capital that's leaving Oklahoma. And I think there's a lot of people who love this place and call it home, but they would love to contribute their talents globally and internationally with team members and to a greater cause through their work. And so I want to enable people here, and I think most people here today attending are of the Teklahoma community. And I wanted to do a little bit something to give back to my home community. Thank you for your time today. I'm happy to take any questions. So I'm actually in the process of trying to establish that now. Um, I am based in Houston, and Elastique is also based in Houston, but it's at even the pre-bootstrap stage. Uh, most people are not motivated to be involved for their own small piece uh, that they contribute. So kind of inducing everyone to use Slack as a communications medium, um, some might say guidance, some might say guidance, uh, encouragement. It's, it's a process. It's really about looking at the fewer than 10 members who are part of this team, understanding who they are and what motivates them to be involved in the small way that they are, and then showing them the value of this asynchronous communication was just, just one small part of that agile, agile process. Thank you. Thank you.